Good morning. Praise the Lord. Welcome to Victorious Faith. I'm Cherry Campbell. All this week, we have been studying the subject of heaven. Yes, heaven. Heaven is a wonderful place. Now, why should we study heaven? Well, first of all, because the Bible tells us to. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 and 2, it says, Since then you have been raised with Christ. Set your hearts on things above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. So we see right here that God has commanded us to set our hearts and our minds on things above. Now that includes heaven. However, it also includes all of the kingdom of God. So God has told us to put our hearts and minds on heaven. Now, some people have said, why should I be, you know, so they say they're so heavenly minded. They're no earthly good. Well, that's not true. And that's not what the Bible says. Because being heavenly minded also helps us to keep our focus, keep our perspective and keep our priorities right in life. And so we need to keep our mind on eternal things in order to keep our priorities right. And also the Bible teaches us that thinking on these things brings comfort, encouragement and hope. In 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13, Paul wrote, Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. Now, what does he mean about those who fall asleep? Well, falling asleep is what the New Testament calls those people who have died actually in the body. Their bodies have died. The Bible calls them fallen asleep. And so that's what Paul is writing about. Those who have died in the flesh or in the body. He says they are the ones who have fallen asleep. And he says, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep. He, Paul said that we should not be ignorant about those who who have fallen asleep or who have died. And he also goes on to say, or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. And so we see that without Christ, we have no hope, but in Christ, we do have hope and we have hope also about our loved ones who have already died in the body and have fallen asleep. If they are born again, they are now in heaven. If they're not born again, well, first of all, you don't know for sure if they were born again or if they were not born again. You may think they were not born again, some of you might have a loved one that you believe had lived an ungodly life their whole life, even been very wicked, and you believe that they probably went to hell. And I want to encourage you with one thing. You never know. Because in the very last moments of a person's life, you never know. If they have cried out to Jesus and asked Jesus to save them. And the Bible says in Romans ten thirteen, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And, you know, God is always trying to draw people to salvation. And many times as people are about to die and breathe their very last breath, they get a revelation of Jesus Christ. They do. They may have hardened their hearts their whole lives, their whole life long, 
And I'm not saying you have a chance all the time to get saved before you die. Certainly, we need to prepare ourselves before we come close to death. Because we never know if we'll have that split moment to cry out to the Lord. But we also don't know if someone did not have that moment. You, in other words, what I'm saying is you can't count on it for yourself. Don't just say, well, I'm just going to live my life the way I want to. And then in my last breath, I'll cry out to Jesus and get saved. No, you can't count on that because you don't know what's going to happen if you will even be conscious in your last moment. And then you don't know if you will have that opportunity to cry out to the Lord and be saved. You need to cry out to the Lord now. Today is the day of salvation. Don't wait any longer because you don't know what's going to happen today or tomorrow. And if you'll even make it through the day, you need to call out to the Lord today to be saved and you will be saved. However, what I'm saying is we also don't know when a person in their last moment does call out to Jesus to be saved. So never give up. Even if they've died, don't be discouraged. Just hold on to the thought. Maybe they did call out to Jesus and were saved. You will never know until you reach heaven. But those that we do know have called out to Jesus. Then Paul tells us, don't be ignorant about those who fall asleep or grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. Because Paul is saying we have hope. We have the hope of seeing them again. In Titus 1, 2, it says we have the hope of eternal life. And also again in Titus 3, 7, it says we are heirs having the hope of eternal life. So we have the hope of seeing our loved ones again. And in First Thessalonians 4, verse 17 and 18, after Paul says that we who are alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, he said, so we shall ever or always be with the Lord forever Verse 18, therefore, encourage each other with these words. So he's telling us to encourage each other with these words. So looking to heaven and learning about heaven and not being ignorant about those who have died. But what is heaven like now? What are people doing in heaven now? This brings comfort, encouragement and hope. Now, today, I want to focus on babies and children in heaven. Yes, babies in heaven. Jesus said in Matthew nineteen fourteen, Let the little children come to me and do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. Notice he said the little children. I believe that the little children he is speaking of is specifically the babies and small children. All babies and small children that die either in the womb or soon after they're born or even as infants or small, small children They do go to heaven. All of them do. Because once they are conceived, they are an eternal spirit. You might ask, but how do you know they're in heaven and they haven't gone to hell? Well, let me show you what the Bible says. We're going to look at Bible scripture. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 39 God was writing and and speaking to the Israelites 
as they were about to enter into Canaan land or the promised land as they, after they had been in the wilderness and were going in to take possession of the promised land. Now the promised land is a type and shadow or a foreshadowing, a type of both taking possession in this life of the promises of God, but it's also a picture of heaven. And this is what God said to Israel. Deuteronomy 139, he said, and the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad, they will enter the land. I will give it to them and they will take possession of it. Now, you see, that agrees with what Jesus said in Matthew nineteen fourteen. He says, he said, the little, let the little children come to me for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. God says that the kingdom of heaven belongs to the little children. And God said to Israel in Deuteronomy that the little ones will enter the land. God will give it to them. They will take possession of it. So you see, heaven belongs to the children. David also, after he became king and had committed adultery with Bathsheba, she gave birth to a child and the child became ill. And then that child died. While the child was ill, David had fasted and prayed and wept. When the child died, he got up, got dressed, washed himself and went out of his room and he stopped grieving. His servants asked him this question in Second Samuel chapter 12, verses 22 and 23. David answered, while the child was still alive, I fasted and wept. I thought, who knows? The Lord may be gracious to me and let the child live. But now that he is dead, why should I go on fasting? Can I bring him back again? I will go to him, but he will not return to me. You see, David knew where his son was. And he said that he would go to his son. Now, David was a righteous man, a man of faith, and he knew he would go to his son. That means he knew his son was in paradise. So you see, even David knew that a child will go to be with God. Now, let's explain this a little bit more. God had mentioned in Deuteronomy 139, the little ones that you said would be taken captive, your children who do not yet know good from bad. What does he mean by that? He's talking about having the knowledge of good and evil. Now for that, we need to go back to the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, in the middle of the garden, there was the tree of life and there was the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. God told Adam and Eve in Genesis 2.17, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, for when you eat of it, you will surely die. Now, theologians have called the time when Adam and Eve were in the Garden of Eden before they sinned, they have called that the dispensation of innocence, innocence, because they had not yet received revelation knowledge of good and evil. And so they were innocent. So what you see is that when the knowledge of good and evil comes, 
a person is no longer innocent. The same is with little children, as with Adam and Eve. After Adam and Eve ate the tree, ate the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they lost innocence and became guilty of sin. The same is with little children. Until a child learns and understands there is a difference between good and evil, he is considered innocent. That's why we can look at a little baby, say, oh, isn't he so cute? Isn't he so sweet and adorable? Oh, he's so innocent. We see little children as innocent. Why? Because God sees them as innocent, because there is no understanding in them of good and evil. There is no intent for evil in them, no intention of doing evil in them. They are innocent. Paul writes about it in Romans chapter five, verse 13. It says, To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not charged to anyone's account where there is no law. Now, what I'm going to, how we explain that there is no knowledge of good and evil. So he's saying sin is not charged when those, there is no knowledge of good and evil. Now that does not necessarily mean that a person has never heard the gospel because every child comes to an age of awareness that there is good and evil and that he has done bad or he has done wrong. And when he does that, when he knows that, then he must repent So every human being who knows they have done wrong, they must repent and receive the forgiveness through the blood of Jesus Christ. But if a child does not know they have done wrong, then they are innocent. Paul writes again about it in Romans chapter seven, verse nine. He said, Once I was alive apart from the law, but when the commandment came, or you could say when knowledge came, sin sprang to life and I died. So that means all babies, babies in the womb, babies after they are, they are born, infants and small children who have not yet gotten an awareness or a revelation of good and evil, they are innocent. But when they get that awareness, and now for every child, it can be a different age or a different time of life in their early life. Then when they get that awareness, then they are accountable. So that's when accountability comes And we must make repentance. But before that, they are innocent. When they, if they die while they're innocent as a baby, an infant, a small child, they will definitely go to heaven. God, Jesus said, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. He said, heaven belongs to the little children. I was sharing some testimonies, and testimonies are not equal to scripture. We do not hold up testimonies equal to scripture. But where a testimony can agree with scripture, then we can look at the testimony to give more understanding. And as I've shared before, a minister... A man of God named Jesse Duplantis was taken to heaven. And in his testimony, he said, All of a sudden, I heard kids singing and praising God. Then I saw them. 
They were carrying little harps. The angel said, The children must be taught the oracles of God. I saw that many people were teaching the children, so I realized that God was using people as well as angels to teach others in heaven about him. Then he describes how he saw Jesus reaching out to the children. When Jesus came to the children, he said, all I could see were his hands. That was Jesus hands reaching out to the kids as they played and sang and hugged him. Oh, those kids adored him. Then I heard him say, suffer the little children to come unto me for su for of such is the kingdom of God. Then Jesus told Jesse, these children, and he was speaking even about the aborted babies, cannot wait to see their mothers. Jesse asked Jesus, do you hold it against their mothers and fathers when they have aborted their children? Jesus answered, I forgive them, for they know not what they do. But many have come to the knowledge of who I am, and they will spend eternity with their child. So I want you to see that heaven belongs to children. There is a part of heaven that is specifically for children. There is even an area that is just for the little babies, even the babies that are aborted. There they are cared for. And as they grow, they are taught the word of God, both by angels and by people who are appointed for that work until they grow up and become fully mature which does not take as long as it does on earth. And the children also have a lot of fun playing in heaven. They play with Jesus. They play all the time and they sing and praise God. The father loves the children and Jesus loves the children and the children adore Jesus. And I just want to say this to you. If you have lost a child, a baby, if you aborted, a baby. God does not hold it against you. And do you know what? Your little baby does not hold it against you either. Do you know in heaven, there is no unforgiveness. Your baby, that little son or daughter that you aborted has no offense against you. They love you. They truly love you. And they are eagerly and excitedly looking forward for you to come to heaven to be with them. And when they get, when you get to heaven, they will know you and you will know them. You will have all of eternity. Don't grieve about this life anymore and not spending your life with your child because you will have all eternity, age upon age, age after age, you will have to spend with your child and with all of your children and loved ones in heaven. And there will be no sorrow. There will be only great joy and rejoicing. So know this. Jesus has forgiven you. Your child has forgiven you. And whether you've aborted or miscarried or had a baby die, they are waiting for you. Looking forward to that. For you're coming to heaven. You must know that you must be ready. Are you ready to go to heaven? If you go, are you ready right now? If not, give your heart to Jesus and say, Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. I want to give my life to you. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, write to me and let me know. I want to send you a little free booklet about salvation to help you in your new walk with Jesus. And also, when you partner and sow seed with this ministry, Victorious Faith, our goal and vision is to teach you how to live in faith and victory in this life, to teach you the principles of the word of God, to teach you the laws of the spirit, the laws of the kingdom, so that you can overcome every trial in your life. And when you partner in so financially, give a seed or an offering into this ministry, I want you to know that we pray over every offering that we receive. We do. We literally lay our hands on them 
or if it's online by donation, by credit card online, we take the receipts and we lay our hands on them. And we pray this prayer, Father, in the name of Jesus, we command your blessing on this seed offering that has been sown into Victorious Faith International Ministries. And we bless the seed. We command it to multiply, 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 increase a thousand times more. And we command blessing to come back to the giver to the sower we command them to be blessed in their finances blessed in their home blessed in their family blessed in their bodies blessed in their jobs lord we pray that there is a release of finances back to them meet every one of their needs spirit soul body financially physically relationally and in their work and callings and we say angels you go get their harvest and bring it to them according to matthew thirteen thirty nine, that you are the harvesters of the end of the age. And so we believe God for the harvest to come to you a hundredfold return. And we are continuing to stand in faith agreement with you for your needs to be met. And so if you want more teachings, you write to us at either victoriousfaith.co on the internet Go to our website, victoriousfaith.co, or write to us at Victorious Faith, P.O. Box 1418, Castle Rock, Colorado, 80104. Now, please join me again next week for a continuation of this study on heaven at the same time, Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Remember, God loves you. You are blessed and highly favored by the Lord.